I think that that's a big part of my life as a air quote um, creative person is that I keep telling myself that I'm doing enough. Mm. I don't need to do this. And then somehow I am doing the thing that I said I didn't need to do. I have this incessant need to create and be involved in things and learn how things work. It's so hard for me to like even get loosely interested in something Mm -hmm. without wanting to like be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Like I swear if I knew anything about math or numbers in general, I'd probably be trying to build fucking roller coasters. Yeah, I mean, that'd be sweet. I was going to say fuck math until you said roller coasters. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, ooh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I think that maybe there's like sort of a a partnership that could exist where like, you know, I just, I'm like the wacky Swedish chef of what a roller coaster could be. And then someone needs to like really dial it in. Did you watch, um, oh, what's it called? There's a documentary action, class action park. Yeah, yeah. The dude was just like, I'm going to make this water slide with this loop. I have no idea how this works, but we're going to do it. Yeah. So I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, off camera. Uh, Everybody, uh, make some noise. My friend, uh, I'll go by your uh, professional (laughs) name. pseudo name. Yes. Dominique Darko is in the house. (laughs) Insert the applause. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, We've talked about this before, but, uh, and most people that listen to this podcast probably know this by now, because I don't think I could talk... I don't think I could go one episode without saying the word roller coaster. Yes. I'm a big theme park guy. So, uh, or gal, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm. Um, and I love, uh, <laughs> everything about action park. It's yeah, just, it's the best. It's, it's, it's a total, <laughs> total wild card. So, uh, less about, you know, dangerous water parks and less Darn. about me. You're the guest. <laughs> yeah. But I was trying to get to some sort of a question to start this conversation okay. in terms of like having all of these ideas and wanting to do all of these things for anybody that doesn't know you, you are somebody that does a lot. It could be kind of like, you know, filtered into like one thing we'll call it the arts yeah. or maybe the dark arts is a fun way of putting it. But, um, you know, you do visual arts and special effects mm. and prop making and tattooing and drawing and a little bit lo- of everything, a little bit of all of this stuff. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and obviously all of that didn't start at once. It came from that idea mm. of, I like this one thing and maybe I don't have time to start another thing, but uh, okay, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, maybe I don't know a whole lot about like your background, but I would assume you probably went to school at some point in time. And then (laughs) now you're probably doing something that's a little bit different than what you went to school for, but kind of in line with it. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking know. (laughs) You're not Spider-Man. We don't need the origin story. I might be. You could be. Yeah. But I don't think you are. My intuition, my Spidey senses are not tingling. I'm actually Catwoman. Okay. All right. (laughs) That if you had a whip right now, that would be so fucking gnarly. <laughs> Sound effect, put it in. We don't need like the whole origin story of anybody. Gotcha. But what is the thing? If we reverse engineer the origin story mm. out of everything that you do, what is the thing that you picked up most recently? Like, like creatively. Oh man, I don't even know. Um. Probably, probably wood art. Like the, I draw on like wood. I didn't even know you did that. <laughs> oh wait, no, I've seen things yeah, that you posted. That, like, okay. and yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, but I started that like a couple years ago. There's probably other things I've done like recently. I don't know. I do too many things. It's hard to remember. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's so. It's like, what is the thing for you that allows yourself? to keep on absorbing all of these responsibilities and all of these tasks. It's like, not only do you have all of these interests and these things, but you also Mm -hmm. do these professionally. Mm -hmm. So the lines get blurred between like, what is like relaxing time? Mm -hmm. What is time for myself? What is work time? It's all all just stress. It's like, (laughs) like you're doing all of these things. So like with like the wood art, was that was like something that you found is maybe just like a, I want to do something different to kind of yeah, get yeah. away from my normal job of drawing other things. Yeah, I, no, probably the wood art is probably the thing I do to relax the most because I I don't really do commissions for that or anything. It's kind of just like I have this idea, I'm gonna do it. So that that probably out of like all the art artsy things I do is like my like hobby art thing. Um, 
yeah, it'll probably turn into stress, but for now it's not. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I, I find that I have, as I mentioned before, a really hard time separating myself from the things that I do professionally and the mm. things that I do um, for like personal relaxation mm. or I wanted to use the word pleasure, but that was like a little bit of a weird word to use. But, <laughs> and, but anyways, I think that it's, it's kind of a cool situation to be in. Like, it's kind of lucky to be like, Oh, like literally everything in my life revolves around art yeah, and yeah. music. You know, that's yeah. a, a pretty neat, neato thing. Cause not, not many people like succeed and you know what I mean? Like there's people that draw all the time. There's people that like do music, but like, I feel like you really have to work at it to like succeed at it. Yeah. You need to give a, give you have a to crap. make it your life basically. Yeah, totally. There's, it's not like I'm going to do this as a hobby and you know, it's going to be like what I earn my living off of. It, almost, it becomes your whole life. <laughs> I almost wonder if there's a way to like really do this at the level that somebody like you does or me or anybody else that's like, I'm a full-time artist mm. um, without it bleeding into everything else unintentionally it's just like such a part of who i am and i imagine mm. who you are as well yeah like I, I there's never not a time in my life where i'm not thinking about like some art thing i have to do or something. like even like when i'm out like you know at an amusement park <laughs> like oh crap i have to do this drawing when i get home so it's always yeah. there it's like always on the brain yeah i'm at fucking theme parks like how did they do this projection thing? I'm like, we need props. You know, like, I'm going to go home and make this. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. You know, so yeah, everything that you do creatively involves like uh, 2D stuff, 3D stuff, mm. hand built stuff. I don't know if you do any digital work, but you probably mm. have at some point yeah. in time in your life. I'm actually, I went to, I graduated from Edinburgh with a uh, computer animation degree. So I used to do okay. that. Not so much anymore, but <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So that was my, my hypothesis yeah. <laughs> was correct because every artist it's this, it's the same story for everyone. Hmm. But the thing that's really interesting looking at like your work as an outsider mm -hmm. is just the level of different things that you've done. And I'm curious, like how over time they've like connected to other things, like, right. Like say like you're building. Okay. I guess I need to ask this question first. Okay. In terms of like building like weird physical props or mm -hmm. doing like special effects makeup, was mm -hmm. that before or after getting into tattooing? Uh, that was before. So I, I went to school for animation and like graduated from that. I was like, I can't see myself like doing this for like my career, like I hated it. So then like right after I graduated from there, I went back to special effects school and kind of like worked in like film and stuff. And then like, as soon as I graduated from the Savini school, um, I got an apprenticeship to tattoo. But originally like right out of high school, I wanted a tattoo. I just couldn't get an apprenticeship. I understand. So kind of like went back to like, I don't know, like just want to do everything. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's going to be the theme well, of yeah. this conversation. So my question, because one thing that everybody has told me to do for a large majority of my life is mm -hmm. to get into tattooing, especially when I was in high school, because I didn't do as much music then. I was mm -hmm. mostly just drawing. I was okay. like, you should tattoo. And I was like. That's what they say I'm, to everyone that draws. Yeah, yeah, that's what they fucking say. Uh, and I didn't. I've never tattooed anybody. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I'm curious about, right, is over the years of tattooing, mm -hmm. you're like interacting with a lot of different people mm -hmm. and different body types. You're touching a lot of skin. Yes. <laughs> and I'm curious. I, this sounds really gross, but I'm getting to a point. <laughs> it's they getting real be, creepy. <laughs> it could be. They could be productive, right? How, if at all, has that affected or changed the way that you make props? Like. Um. I guess you just, you learn anatomy a little bit better. Yeah. Always like being on body parts and stuff. Um, I haven't made too many props recently because I haven't really done too much like film stuff since like COVID. Sure. Because like, I'm starting to get back into it now. Um, but yeah, just it's weird how that all relates because like special effects, you're dealing with people's like bodies, like painting faces, painting bodies. Yeah. And tattooing, you're working with people's bodies. So I feel like they kind of went hand in hand in like helping out. Like, yeah. That's the thing. I'm like trying to like 
like think about like how those worlds can be related in a way where it's like when you're doing like prosthetics on somebody, Mm. you know what I mean? It's like, well, like you're both applying like 2d and 3d work to like a shape that's already there. Mm -hmm. And when you're tattooing, it's like, it's strictly 2d, Mm -hmm. but you're like kind of stuck sometimes in a situation with, the canvas that you're you like have, on a right? 3d space. Yeah. It's not like you're drawing on a flat piece of paper. You're drawing and, on like round. Yeah. And you know, people were going to, you know, inevitably want things on parts of their body where it's never going to make mm-hmm. sense and all of that sort of yep. stuff. You yep. know, we don't have to get into all the nuance of tattooing, <laughs> but it's just like, I was just interested in about like how all of that works. And if you had noticed those like connections over the years, I definitely, yeah, I definitely think about that a lot. Um, I couldn't like say specifically how it's like helps, but I, I feel like, I don't know, like, like body painting and stuff, you kind of have to like make things flow and it's the same with tattooing. So it's just stop working with the human body. I don't know. It's a weird thing. <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where like maybe you were doing like some sort of a prosthetic thing with like, and something wouldn't just stay on and you're like, I just wish I could tattoo this. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Be so much easier. (laughs) Uh Now, you know, in terms of the tattooing, I've always been really curious about how tattooing, if I would have gotten into it, Mm -hmm. how it would have changed the way that I approach 2d art on mediums that aren't human flesh. Mm -hmm. Did you find that, the way that you approached art changed it all as a result of tattooing? Oh yeah. Um, for tattooing, you have to kind of keep things simpler. Um, cause everyone, you know, like they always say bigger is better because you want to get all those details in there, but everyone always wants to make it smaller. That's like oh, the thing. Oh yeah. I never so, thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, you can't do a face like tiny, like teeny tiny. Cause over time it's going to turn into a blob. People don't, understand that people don't want to like hear that. So they're like, no, make it as small as possible. So I feel like, yeah, my art has become more, I still try to do like as many details as possible. Like I feel like I always get compliments on how many like details I get into things, but I feel like I've kind of streamlined my art more, my drawings at least made them like cleaner, um, a little more simple than I would um, back in the day. Yeah. So whenever you were getting into drawing, did you find that like your influence was coming from like pop culture things or spooky things? Or did you find yourself like in like a completely different space? And then like, as you grew into finding or adapting to like becoming like, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but you know, me and you, we're both just like dorks, right? Yeah. As you grow, Big into, old like, nerd. as you grow up into being a nerd and like, <laughs> I guess, did you like, were you a nerd before you were an artist or were you an artist before you were a nerd? That's the question. <sighs> um, that's hard. I guess an artist before a nerd. Um, I've, I've done art like my whole life since I was little. Um, and I would just draw like random stuff. Uh, I used to be a horse girl. So I drew a lot of horses Interesting. back in the day. Um, that kind of started a lot of my like more serious drawings, like just horses. Well, that's a lot of yeah. hair. That's complicated yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like it was always just kind of like weird stuff that was in my brain. And then not like it, I think it was like when I started tattooing, I kind of got known for like doing like uh, Pokemon, like anime, yeah. cartoon, video game stuff. That's not really where, when I started out where I saw myself like going, I wanted to do like new school, like big cartoony type thing, which I guess like relates, but um but it just kind of evolved and now like all I do is like Pokemon. <laughs> okay. It's very, uh, it's kind of like a parallel where, you know, I didn't see myself DJing Taylor Swift dance parties, <laughs> yeah. but it's where you ended up. It's where I ended up. <laughs> right. But that's the other interesting thing that comes with being involved in a professional setting, but also like being an artist mm-hmm. because like, There's this strange paradox where there's part of my brain when I was younger and when I was like working at Starbucks and Taco Bell and (gasps) you worked at Taco Bell. It was my first job ever. Mine too. No (laughs) shit. Hell yeah. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Tight. Taco Bell buddies. All weirdos get their start working at Taco Bell. (laughs) 
Your fucking <laughs> your crunch wrap supremes were made by some fucking weirdo supremes. Us. <laughs> <laughs> Us. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Um, anyways. Uh, <laughs> That's, so no, you're just scaring everyone. From yeah, I know. Home. No, That's no, okay, please, please support your local weirdos. Um, but those jobs, right? There's a part where in that time frame, it's like, well, I can't wait. Maybe one day you dream of the idea of, Oh, like I'm not going to work for anybody else. Mm. I'm going to do my own thing and I'm going to make my art and all Mm. this stuff. And like maybe to some degree you kind of get known for your art, Mm. but then it comes around to the fact that you start end up doing things that like you're happy to do, Mm. but it also isn't like your thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like not in like a a bad way, but it's just like, I am not the Taylor Swift guy. (laughs) And like, you probably were like, well, I don't want to be the the Pokemon tattooer. Oh no, I do. (laughs) Well, now you do. (laughs) Yeah. That's a, that's a good business. That's what call. I want to be known for. Yeah. <laughs> if I just drew Pokemon for the rest of my life, I'd be like, I mean, yeah, sure. Set. It's better than making crunch wraps <laughs> easily, but it's funny because I guess the ultimate point that I'm trying to make is it, it's like, you know, you could be happy what you're doing. Like mm-hmm. I didn't mind working at Taco Bell and I don't mind doing Taylor's with dance parties, Yeah, but it's just, it wasn't what I was expecting, yeah. but you need to like, kind of like realize it, like e- whether you're working in the food industry or the entertainment music industry or Mm -hmm. like the tattoo, the arts industry, Mm -hmm. like you're still working with and for other people. Yeah. Like you still have clients and you still have people that you need to make happy. Yeah. Yeah. The world of tattooing in general Mm -hmm. has become a lot more accepted Mm -hmm. since we were youth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Since I had my first tattoo, it's, different it's yeah, crazy and I mean, i'm like i'm not that old <laughs> when i worked at starbucks i had to like cover like i couldn't even like have like mm-hmm. tattoos on my arms i had to like always wear like a long sleeve yeah. shirt in the middle of the summer when i was when i was going to school at edinburgh um i was trying to get a job up there and i i applied to sheets and they wouldn't even like hire me because i had visible tattoos it's nuts. And now like you go there and you see everyone. They're all oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tatted that's, up. <laughs> it's the, the same thing with Starbucks. I remember the first time I went into Starbucks and I saw like somebody that was like, say like you can tell if somebody's a manager because of like the colored mm-hmm. shirt that they're wearing and shit there. Cause fucking weird. But they had tattoos. I was like, you can show your tattoos now. They're like, this yeah. is different. <laughs> I was like, that's cool. And obviously now it's just like, I think most people were just happy to have anybody that will work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, it's, it sucks that it's still, it hasn't really been accepted in the way that it should have. I feel like it's been accepted out of like desperation, not out of like general, like (laughs) a genuine, we need people. So I guess you'll do. Yeah. 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 It sucks. Yeah. You know, whenever, you know, you're growing up and like, you're interested in this, like alternative subculture type stuff, Mm. the, the tattoos and the dark clothes and, you know, the Satan music, piercings, piercings, crazy stuff. (laughs) You know, I, my, uh, I was a a lot more of an extreme looking human being when I was in high school than I am now. But I remember it just being like so weird because like there was like a period of time where like the same kids that like picked on me the year before, Mm -hmm. like realized that I could draw good. Mm -hmm. And then like all of a sudden, like I was valued because I had like this skill (laughs) set that could be like potentially like beneficial to them. You know, like I don't know about like your experience and I guess I'm about to ask about it. (laughs) Uh, Taking it back to high school days. Not necessarily. It doesn't even necessarily (laughs) have to be high school, but like, you know, just like, coming up in general and like finding yourself as like who you are as a Mm. person in this wild environment with like, you know, uh, bad parenting and hormones and, uh, (laughs) underpaid school teachers that don't give a shit. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a a lot. A cacophony of fuck (laughs) is really what it is. Clusterfuck. Yeah. And you know, whenever I imagine like, you know, you were probably already like doing art and figuring out like who you were and Mm -hmm. what you wanted to be at that time. And like, you know, what was your relationship with, I guess the outside world as, uh, maybe what some would consider an outsider. And I'm just assuming that that was the position you you were in. You assumed right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I don't know. Like, I I feel like I've always been me, like, true to myself. Um, I probably have my mom to thank for that. She's always been very supportive of me doing, like, arts and stuff. Um, high school, yeah, I definitely was not the popular kid. <laughs> um, I wasn't picked on too much. Like, I don't know. My school was pretty chill for the most part. But uh, I don't know. Like, I just... I've never felt like a fake yeah. version of myself. I've always just been into what I've been into and kind yeah. of just grew it. And, you know, now it's funny. Like I get messages from like dudes from my high school. They're like, I thought you were so cool, but I was too afraid to say back in high school. But like, can I take you on a date now? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that, that's kind of satisfying. Uh, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. I had a, a um, so n- nobody that I went to high school with has asked me to go on a date, but uh, there was this girl. Uh, her name is Stephanie. I won't say her last name because we are we are friends on Facebook. So gotcha. The Stephanies can narrow it down. <laughs> but I remember um, uh, it was the last day of seventh grade. Okay. We had lockers next to each other. We were in the same homeroom. Okay. All of this stuff, right? The last day of seventh grade. She's never said a fucking word to me. <laughs> she confessed her love to you. Yes. Aw. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how. She, we're, you know, she's like, hey, Brian. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I just wanted to let you know, I think you're really ugly. <laughs> no. I swear. <laughs> That's what she said to me. Nuh-uh. Uh, yes. That's mean. <laughs> it was so fucking wild. She just came out of nowhere and said Yeah, that. it was so wild. Is it, was there any follow-up to that? No. <laughs> I was like, okay. She said that and walked away? I think I walked away. I was like, okay. And then I like walked away. <laughs> and that was seventh grade. I was in high school with her for the rest of my fucking life. Did she say anything else to you? No. <laughs> we didn't really even have any classes together. She ended up being like a cheerleader and stuff and all this shit. And then, you know, she got married to one of the other dudes that was on the football team <laughs> and had kids and stuff, which is super <laughs> sick. But like a few years ago, she sent me a friend request on Facebook. She wanted to tell you're ugly. <laughs> I was though. No, when I accept, when I accepted the friend request, I was like, I was fucking hoping <laughs> like hoping that like, you know, you accept it and you like, you'll get that message. It's like, Hey, check out my band or do this. I was hoping it would just be like, you're ugly, but it wasn't. <laughs> you're still ugly. Yeah, it just didn't fucking happen. It just didn't happen. But that did not go how I was expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was such a fucking wild card, but like it really like the interesting thing. So that, that, that was seventh grade. So that was like kind of before I became like a real freak. You know what I mean? I like, like that I was a like, freak. I was like a freak on a leash, but it wasn't quite like oh God. off it yet. You know what I mean? Like the the years following, it got real wild. But I feel like it after really, that, like that, it really colored my perspective of like <laughs> who I'm going to engage with and how to trust interactions mm-hmm. with people. You know, like the the thing that you know she didn't realize. No, no reason why she would have is that like I didn't have the best home situation, mm. and uh, I was used to um, like insults and crazy things being thrown around at people in my home, people gotcha. with me. So you know, being called ugly really wasn't that You're big like, of it. Uh, I was like, because ah. I was gonna say that could be like some uh, you know some trauma like yeah, right there. But. Yeah, it it, it 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 all things considered. I was fine, but it is something that definitely happened and That's I've wild. never forgot about it. But yeah, <laughs> it just, it really, it just, it is like, it was really good because it just made me very hesitant to yeah. interact with anybody of a certain like demographic. I got that. And it was so weird because like for a long time, nobody like really fucked with me. Like people didn't pick on me in the mm. same way that maybe they didn't pick on you, but I was just like super kind of ignored. I but then feel like that, yeah. all of a sudden it was just kind of like, uh, you know, like the, the cute preppy girls would want to talk to me because mm-hmm. like I was like real into graffiti and mm-hmm. be like, Hey, draw my name, mm-hmm. you know, and all that stuff. And I'm fucking like 15, like, okay. <laughs> as if anybody like, you know, as if like the, it's really going to be anything productive. Yeah. My fucking like, you know, I have a fucking like death tone shirt and Jinko's on like, you know, <laughs> they fucking really care. 
High school's weird. School is weird in general. I don't know. I'm glad, glad we're not there anymore. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, has life gotten any less weird after high school? No. No. <laughs> it's still very strange on a daily basis. So, yeah, just, just in different ways. Yeah, I think that, you know, this isn't a... Um, it may sound a little like cool and I don't mean it in that way, but I do think that in a weird way, people like us are a little bit more built for how fucked the world is versus like other people that maybe have like lived in some kind of like weird social fantasy about like things being nice. Like the perfect suburb. Yeah. Family life thing. It's kind of like that situation where like, I don't know. Okay. So like we surround ourselves in terms of like our interests in a world of fantasy to some degree, right? Yes. With like oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the entertainment that we enjoy, but like total escapism, <laughs> but also like I can personally say, and I don't know if like you can agree with me on this, but you probably will to some degree. Uh, like something like the, the Stepford wives mm-hmm. is like, like that's, that's a very frightening concept. Oh, that is yeah. much more scary to me than, yeah. you know, some like, any like Texas Chainsaw Massacre shit being movie weird, or something yeah, like yeah. That, you know? like, <laughs> I'd rather like, be in a like a legit horror movie. Like <laughs> send Ghostface after me, than like I'm in like you know, perfect prissy suburban life. Yeah, thing, thing. no, Ooh. yeah, no. Ooh. That was like Ooh. a. Uh, uh, <laughs> but for a lot of people, I think that it's like I guess it goes into kind of like that stereotype that, um heavy metal people were so scary, but they all just like, like cats. They're the nicest people. (laughs) Like, you know, like I, I have met so many nice people that are scary looking, dressing all black, you know, with tattooed eyeballs and like stuff that are like the friendliest people versus like, you know, the, the Karen looking mom that comes up to me in Starbucks and hands me a Jesus paper because I have piercings. (laughs) Like, I think that, I think that there's, there's maybe part of me, right? And I never thought about this until just now where sometimes being, you know, in my thirties and still wearing sailor moon Mm t-shirts and things like that. (laughs) As you are right now. Yes. As I am right now. (laughs) Um, I'm like, okay, like, is this like what I should be doing as a 30 something year old? No, I feel the same. I feel like I am a child. (laughs) <laughs> but I think that really what it comes down to, and this is a thing that I never thought about before, is that maybe there's a part of me that is still the person that I am because I found so many genuinely nice people mm-hmm. in this community. Mm-hmm. I never found, you know, when I was growing up, anybody that was nice that looked like what an adult should look like. No. And now, I mean, granted, you know, as I've grown old, I know plenty of normal looking human beings, Mm -hmm. which I mean, I think I'm pretty (laughs) fucking normal too, if all things considered, but I know plenty of like, you know, stereotypical normal people that are nice. Polo shirts, for the most, yeah. But for the (laughs) most part, I think that what the reason why I am like this is because like, this was my tribes, a dramatic word to use, but tribe, like growing up community, that's a better word to use community when I was growing up and I found comfort in this and I found Mm -hmm. myself in this as a result of that environment. And that's probably why I still wear sailor moon t-shirts. I mean, like I feel like it's just more like our generation, you know, like it's more acceptable now to like still be attached to things that you were when you were younger. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of us are just big nerds and we feel okay to embrace that, which is awesome. Um, even like, you know, like tattooing, I see a lot of different people and like, I'll have people that come in that are like businessmen. They get a freaking huge ass, like dragon ball, (laughs) you know, thigh piece Yeah, because they're like, you know, like I have this stressful job. Like this reminds me of like my childhood and this like brings me happiness. So I'm going to get giant ass Vegeta right up on my thigh. So I think it's, it's cool. Like, you know, being a nerd, like there's us weirdos and you know even the normal people nowadays can be a little bit low-key weirdos yeah. <laughs> or nerds well, or whatever you want to call yeah, it i mean i think that there's part of me that is convinced i mean especially with like the popularity now of like 
all of the Marvel shit Mm -hmm. and how big it is. There aren't as many weirdos in the world as the people that will go fucking see, you know, guardians of the galaxy when Mm -hmm. it comes out. And I think that it's like resonating with the inner weirdo, which maybe goes back to the inner child Mm -hmm. that a lot of people have. I think most people for the, I feel confident in saying that most people probably know who they are Mm -hmm. when they are like a preteen, a teenager. Like I still, I feel pretty much the same. Yeah. I don't feel like I've changed. Yeah. I I do not feel like I've changed at all, but I think a lot of people feel pressured to change and I never really felt pressured to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely like temporary moments where I felt pressured, you know, like certain situations and Oh sure. Yeah. When I'm like, Working at Starbucks, making whatever I was making at that time, and just wrap like, a lot of chino. Like, oh, you know, I, I wish I really would have done something else. Yeah, but it all worked out. I heard Starbucks does a good job, though. It's not the worst. You get free coffee. Yeah, yeah. That's my, that's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna quit there's, tattooing and work at Starbucks now. There's honestly uh, a part of me that misses Starbucks, and after I worked at Starbucks, I worked at like a another coffee shop that was just like a local independent coffee shop mm-hmm. for a while. And I really, really liked doing the barista thing. It mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Just, um, I think in the same way that I like making a piece of art and somebody enjoys it or a song that somebody enjoys. Like did I like, did you do latte art? Like I never well, was good enough to do the latte art. That's it, disappointing. I'm disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, do think that I was really good at making, um, just making a good drink. And I enjoyed making a good drink yeah. for somebody and like, you know, having the regulars that would come in and mm. not feel hesitant about getting a drink from you mm. and experimenting and trying different things. Gotcha. I enjoyed that at Taco Bell as well. Do you used uh, to like make some wild stuff at Taco Bell? No, I remember playing Frisbee with the tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> and being blown away when I learned about the um, the cinnamon twists. I didn't really make food when I worked there. I more like did the cashier thing. Okay. Yeah. I I was glad not to make the food. Yeah. Latte art is really hard. It's just practice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say that I didn't never not try, but I also... Uh, being a product of my environment, I didn't know anybody that really did it. That sounds, so it's that not sounds like, like an excuse. I didn't have That's a, an excuse. You could practice. YouTube tutorials. There was ways to learn. You just did not. Okay, so we're going to go. <laughs> really, I think latte art is cool, but I also don't think I give a shit. So I think it really goes back to if you want to do something, you you'll can. Learn. Yeah. <laughs> if you really want to do something, yes. if you really give a shit, you'll give a shit. Gotcha. And obviously, I could sit here and be a ding dong and make all the excuses in the world to try to justify my you just behavior. Just don't care about latte. I get I it. Just I just don't it. All care right. about latte art. All right. Well, I'm gonna go home and learn it. Just to show you up. Bet. Do it. <laughs> Do it. I hope you do. You can do All right. fucking All right. fucking Pokemon latte art. Yeah, It'd be fire. Pikachu's ass, like right on right on my coffee every morning. Yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky stuff. I'm telling you. No, it looks hard. I don't think. I can um. Do yeah, because there's like everything has to be right. It, like the consistency of your espresso pull, the mm-hmm. consistency of your milk, and like understanding the ratio. There's also like a big thing with like. Um, the size of the cup and like the aeration of things going into the cup. There's like all kinds of science that goes into it that oh. makes it really cool. And it's like <laughs> what makes actually people that are good at it. Like it's what makes it like super impressive. All right. That that sounds like a lot. You I'm, could do it though. Uh, no, never mind. No, that's a lot. It. That's a lot of work. I think that <laughs> what we should do. So one of the things that um, I'm going to be doing with this downstairs space that I haven't because uh, I just, my life has been a complete fuck over the past year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have this whole extra kitchen behind me and people have, I've been saying this for a while. I'm going to be doing a cooking show. Oh my God. I really like Guy to cook. Fieri. Guy Fieri. 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 No, I think it is Fieri. I say It Fieri. is Fieri. Yeah. 
But don't correct me on Guy no, Fieri. No, I wasn't correcting you. <laughs> I actually, I wasn't trying don't, to. Don't don't mansplain Guy Fieri to me. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't. I, that's, I was just saying it because I'm excited because no, I'm a guy guy. So I'm I'm, I'm, a, guy, a, I'm a guy girl. <laughs> we could do a latte art <gasps> competition. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm down. That'd so, be amazing. Uh, I'm going to put that in my mental right. bank of things that I probably won't so do then, for another four years, but no. it'll be cool. I'm going I'm to start practicing. So we're, we're going to do it. Soon. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll, <laughs> I will, I'm going to, I will go into debt and buy some completely unnecessary espresso machine, you know, so we can do it proper. Can we have spiked frosted hair like guy and sunglasses? I'll just get it? those visors that come with like the spike frosted <laughs> wig, like sewn into it. It'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This needs to happen. I'll get the visors, but you got to find the shirts. Oh, I got, I already have got Fieri shirt. <laughs> okay. When I was in special effects school, I made goth Fieri <laughs> <laughs> for my, for my hair. We had a hair and beards class. So I made his goatee and I put it on my friend who is a very, she's even like shorter than me. Little goth chick. <laughs> We drew her eyebrows on and stuff and gave her the good and then the flame shirt and she took pictures doing the pose. That's great. Yeah, it was great. I fucking love that. <laughs> that rules. I do. I'm actually genuinely um, a guy guy. I think that. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. He's I such think, a cool dude. Yeah, no, I think that as an outsider, it's easy to see somebody like that and maybe mm. feel annoyed. Yeah. But also it's like, if you understand, like the, it's all about intention mm. for me. And I feel like he is unbelievably himself. Yes. Very genuine. Yes. The intentions are good. Yeah. He just wants to share fun, cool food. Exactly. And be himself yeah. and a little rock and roller yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he can have his fun hair. <laughs> I wish I could have spiky hair. I don't have any hair. All right, he don't give a shit. He yeah. Is, he's just doing his thing. He has rest. Have you been to his restaurant? He has like two of them in Pittsburgh, I think. No, so he has chicken guy in the strip, right? Yeah, I haven't then, gone. I haven't been to that one. There's one in the Westmoreland Mall. Okay, um, that's in not the Pittsburgh. In the but- well, basically, <laughs> it's 45 minutes from Pittsburgh. I, it's I don't Pittsburgh. spend. My, I, don't, I don't find myself out there too often, so well, I wasn't aware that it was there. Yeah, uh, well, I used to live out near there. Um, yeah, they open a casino in the Westmoreland Mall. <laughs> Okay. It's a Tight. huge, it's, well, it's not huge, but it's casino. Tight. And then in the casino, he has like a little restaurant. Um, I forget what it's called, like Guy's American Kitchen or something. I am like so romanticizing this idea of just going to the fucking Westmoreland Casino. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> don't romanticize that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win myself. Gonna, Some money and I'm gonna, buy I'm gonna dinner. Get, I'm going to get 30 bucks. <laughs> I'm going to get 30 bucks on a slot. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to. Dude, the food was good. Like it was pretty decent. I I was vegetarian at the time. You're vegetarian, right? No, no. Mm-mm. I thought you were. I was for. Well, so this is the thing that I hate about all these terms, right? <laughs> this is a complete sidebar. For a long time, I guess I was technically a pescatarian. I, that's what I was. Yeah, and, I ate uh, fish. And I think that um, the if I was gonna be very nuanced about my diet, I will call it hesitant. Mm-hmm. pescatarian or okay. annoyed pescatarian. Okay. Um, I think that I didn't really, I don't know. It sounds rude. It's not that I didn't care. Mm-hmm. I just think like when I started doing that diet, it was like over 10 years ago. Okay. And then like, I kind of just got like used to doing it. Mm-hmm. And then when I started like being out of town more and traveling and doing all of these things, it was like, well, like I don't really care and I want to try things. Like I hate mm. going to places and being like, well, I'm like, reg- I'm relegated to like the two things that yeah. they just put on the menu. Cause they felt obligated to mm. like, I want to try stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't think I'm like a fucking villain, but I also don't really have any like moral issues with like no. it. But I also like dated somebody for a very long time that mm. was like vegetarian, vegetarian. Okay. Gotcha. So then that was like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I, Whatever. Makes it easier. And then, you know, um, as things do, that stopped. And then uh, I was like, I'm going to go get a burger. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got to the point where I was like, 
Got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> I don't think it's the worst thing if I eat some nuggets. You know, it's cool. Yeah. So I feel that. But I had the veggie burger at Guy Fieri's restaurant, which I feel like is kind of a sin, but it was good. Nice. <laughs> nice. Bringing it all back. <laughs> yeah, I think that like, it's funny because there's still like, my favorite restaurant in Pittsburgh, if not the world, is a vegan restaurant. Apteca in Bloomfield. I don't know if you've ever been there. Yeah, I used to work in Bloomfield, which is um, weird because I've never. It is so. It's all vegan Polish food. Ooh. But it's like real, like wild, like very unique recipes, all homemade stuff. Um, you're not gonna eat anything like that anywhere else mm. that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, it's really cool, very unique, nice people, and uh, it's my favorite in the hmm. city. And I would like eat that. And there's other like vegetarian, vegan things that I would still probably eat oh, over yeah. a lot of other things. I, yeah, I still prefer like, a lot of like vegetarian type stuff. I'm like open to whatever. Mm -hmm. But also like, you know, if I am. I enjoy if, a good if I'm, half, <laughs> if I'm fucking, if I'm halfway to St. Louis and I'm just like on fucking turnpikes and all I could do is fucking go to DQ. I want to eat something other than French fries. Yeah. I haven't eaten in fucking 12 hours. That's true. It's when like, you travel a lot, it's hard to eat yeah. vegetarian. And it's hard for me being like somebody that is like really into, I mean, I just told you that I want to do a cooking show. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fucking top chef, but I like the craft <laughs> Food, of things. Yeah. I like good art and good mood. I mean, good, good. I mean, I still listen to corn. So what the fuck do I know <laughs> about good art? But I like. Corn is a masterpiece. <laughs> what are you but, talking about? You know, about? I, I, I'm into, I like what I like. And I hate the idea of going into a place and just being like, oh, I can only eat from yeah, this little no. thing. I want to be able to be like, I'm going to do whatever. Granted, I'm still not like an, an incredibly adventurous eater, especially it, even being somebody that was a pescatarian for so long. Yeah. There's a lot of seafood stuff that <gasps> still is like very um, danger to me as far as my comfortability goes. But that's just me. That's not you. What's I'll eat like anything. Okay. I am a garbage can. What's the wildest thing you've eaten in oh, terms man. of seafood? So like seafood. Oh, I'm from Texas. So I've eaten a lot of weird shit. <laughs> seafood. Um, when you said that, your voice sounded way more Texas than I've ever heard. Oh, it comes out sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to unhear it now. That, that's that's what I, People say I have an accent every now and then. I but never I don't. I don't hear it, but it, it comes out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyways. Um, I don't know. Specifically seafood. I don't know. Probably like, I mean, octopus. That's not that weird, but. I've had, I no, I've, I've had octopus tacos before. Ah, they have those octopus tacos at taco. That's where I had them. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go there so bad to try those. Um, I don't know. I, is alligator seafood? I've had that. Wow. <laughs> that is a question. Yeah. I guess it's not sea. They're Lake not in food? the ocean. They're Well, I mean, not all fish are from Pond the ocean. Pond food? <laughs> I don't know. Swamp food? Swamp food. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, I don't know if that would be considered seafood, but. That's so, that's, it. it you just fucked me up. <laughs> I <laughs> never. This is the question. What is alligator seafood? Surf and turf. <laughs> huh. That's interesting. Okay. I've never had alligator. No. no. It's like chicken. I believe Pretty that. similar. Have you ever had ostrich? I feel like I have. I have. So they had all kinds of weird shit. Like, I remember when I was little in Texas, there was like, definitely remember like ostrich on like menus and some place, kangaroo, like mm. rattlesnake. You get like the Texas State Fair. You could basically eat anything. You could eat probably a tire <laughs> that was fried in butter. Like <laughs> fucking tire jerky. <laughs> I, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. Like they had everything. So they don't give a fuck in Texas. <laughs> oh Lord. Are you a fan of fairs? I love fairs. I've I'm been, a fan of anything that has rides and yeah, I, uh, fair food and we're, we're coming up. I don't know if you, I mean, you've lived here long enough. I'm sure the big Butler fair. Oh my God. It's coming up. Yeah, it's isn't it it's this like, week? I think it's, it's the fourth I think it of July starts weekend. this weekend, yeah. Some little boy told me I look like a clown there one year. I was real upset. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to go to the Butler Fair. They have pumpkin funnel cake. Never had. You like pumpkin stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Big Butler Fair. I'm down. Let's go. Let's go. Side <laughs> note. We got to go to the Big Butler Fair. That'd be fucking fire. But um, yeah, so my, my, I really haven't eaten a whole lot of strange seafood, but over like the past few years, because like before, you know, when me and my ex started dating, mm -hmm. you know, I was always pescatarian and I like wanted to be more adventurous, but mm -hmm. that was the only world that I could be adventurous in. So I started getting a lot more adventurous with like different like sushis and raw stuff mm -hmm. and all that and very cool i like all that stuff you but, like sushi but you're like weird about seafood no uh, well that's the thing i don't want you i don't want it to come off as though i'm weird about seafood i'm mm. not there's just some things like have you ever been to uh umami in lawrenceville mm -hmm. yeah i love that place the best but the only thing that fucks me up there and it's not even seafood but it's the quail egg okay i could see that it's like i'll eat all the fish but i don't want that the, so it's not even necessarily a seafood thing, but there's kind of like a weird, like slimy, like I don't even necessarily like care for like a dippy egg. I could see that. It so is, it's something about that kind yeah. of like that, like I, I mean, I like that, like but still some like yeah, it's eggs just, and like ramen and stuff. Yeah. I like, I'm like it tastes good, but like I'm kind of weird, like eating yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I like I kind of dodge it in those situations. Mm. Like I think that. If I'm uh, eating something, I just kind of want it to be reasonably solid. I'm gotcha. not a big fan of mushy so or a slimy. It's a texture thing. Texture thing. Yeah. Makes sense. And sometimes it could be a bit of a, a look thing. I get that. It looks a little like. Well, I feel know, like it kind of goes with texture where it's like. It could be a little. Oh, I'd eat a Demogorgon. <laughs> Fry me up that Demogorgon. <laughs> so what would a Demogorgon be considered in terms of like poultry or, I mean, obviously it's not poultry. It's not seafood. Like, okay, uh, we could just say it's alien, right? It's uh, otherworldly. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's going to be, oh, this is an interesting question. Do you think there's going to be a time in our life where we're eating aliens? I'm or aliens are eating us? I'm terrified of aliens. <laughs> are you? Aliens are my biggest fear. Okay. Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm sorry that I talked about <laughs> no, it, but like let's a, dig in. <laughs> trauma. Oh, I didn't no. know we were doing therapy today. Ah! That's cool. <laughs> so, um... I mean, genuinely, if you don't want to talk about this, no, please okay. let me know. I can talk about it. Um, so I guess my uh, first question, and it's a simple one. <laughs> why? All right. There's there's two answers to this. Okay. The first easier one is just because like, so like I'm mostly afraid of like the gray aliens, the big head, big eyes ones. And just because like, don't like the way they look just scary. Like do not the whole abduction thing. The deeper reason why I believe I am terrified. <laughs> My mother love her. She's the greatest person ever, but she used to fuck with me when I was little. And I believe she's the reason I have anxiety. <laughs> oh no. But, um, so she used to tell me when I was little that, uh, I wasn't born. She found me in the backyard and I was green and I had antennas. So she took me to the hospital and they cut off my antennas and they're like, oh, her skin color, she'll turn to like a normal skin color and look like, just like a human, like she'll be like fine, but one day they'll be back to get her. So I believe that's kind of like my deep rooted thing as to why I've always been afraid of being abducted by aliens and just do not. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. So if you're a parent, do not fuck with your children. <laughs> oh, I think the thing that I was the most afraid of growing up, and it's not my mom's fault. It was my grandmother's fault, uh, was actually God. Okay. Um, because like most people are afraid of God, um, even those that are religious. <laughs> well, like it was like in this way where like, so my grandmother, oh my God, Jesus Christ. This is like, it, this is too much. I should bring it. Okay, so I like, can handle it. <laughs> my grandmother was this like alcoholic that had to deal with her fucking drug addict kids, like gotcha. my mom and all this shit. And like uh, the only thing that my grandma could rely on was like this belief in something bigger than herself. Mm -hmm. But her being an alcoholic and me being like a child, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? She would see like a reflection from the sun in the glass and be like, it's God. And oh, like, God. like, like, and like, like grab see me and be like, like do you see it? <laughs> do you see God? And all of this stuff. And like Oof. the reason why when I was growing up, I had such a big issue with religion was because like 
it like I felt like it was the thing that made like my grandma who like even though she was an alcoholic mm. she was still like the only like sort of idea of love that I had in my life as a child and uh it was the thing that made her crazy gotcha I mean as I got older I started to understand well actually maybe yeah. it was the uh seeing the flaws in that, yeah <laughs> you know it was that stuff but you know at the time it was just like this is fucking no yeah. Ugh, when you're a you kid, know. you're like small. You can't like yeah, process it, that. It just like it was, it was way too much information for my brain, you know. And I mean, I'm like, you know, I'm, I I don't understand anything. Yeah. You know, there's like, I just want to go outside and ride my bike. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to learn all the fatalities in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I don't need to know about God. <laughs> this is too much. Yeah, but like the funny thing is, like I remember there was a couple times where like. Um, she like really wanted me to go to church with her. Mm. So I did because I was like, you know, like I'm a respectable young boy. I love you. <laughs> and like it, like I, but I went into church mm. with the idea that everybody was the same way that my grandma was. Gotcha. I mean, when I was a kid, I wasn't like, Oh, these are all alcoholics that yeah, think yeah. every reflection is Jesus. But like, in my brain at the time, I thought everybody was in that same way. Gotcha. And, I, and I felt like such an outsider because she would be like, do you see this? Look at this. this. Yeah. And I was like, I don't. But so it's I just, like, <laughs> I do not understand. I've seen people that are not, you know, alcoholics that are like that. That's very curious, right? That's very, that's, those yeah. are the real aliens. Yeah. That's, I don't, I've only been to church probably like, three times in my life. Um, my mom, like my mom's side of, I don't associate with my dad's side of the family, but my mom's side of the family was all like Catholic, not like crazy Catholic, but they never, my mom never really raised me like religious. We went to a Catholic service like once. Um, for some reason I was real into eating cans of spinach at the time. A little Popeye. Very strange child. Yeah. And we went to, we went to the service and, uh, as soon as we got home, I puked up all my uh, my spinach. My mom's like, you're the fucking exorcist. We're not going again. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I was, uh, last time I was at Universal, they had um, these uh, Popeye shirts that they were selling in like the Toon Lagoon area. <laughs> it's just like Popeye downing a can of spinach. It was and me it's, when I was like 10. <laughs> and it says plant-based, which I thought was really cute. See, next time I go, I'm going to have to buy that now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the unfortunate thing about like theme park shirts is that they always print them on the worst colors. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I went to like, Disney for the first time and I was like, I like this shirt, but they're all like not black. Well, the thing is, and I'm convinced of this is, have you ever tried to wholesale buy t-shirts for anything? Yes. The colors that nobody wants are, are the always cheapest. way cheaper. Mm -hmm. Like and the if you're neon a business, colors you're just like, that. well, we'll we'll buy all of the the cheap ones and just print whatever on it. That's and true. it's just like, why is there a fucking haunted mansion t-shirt on this fucking color? It makes no sense. Everything in this store needs to be black. That's why you just everything you just buy all the the Halloween horror nights. It's always on black. Yes. They don't make it on any other color. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm gonna stop you right there because if we start talking about HHN, this conversation is gonna be easily another fucking two weeks. But my dream one year I am going to, uh, <laughs> spend a few months in Florida, go down guest spot at someone's like tattoo shop and try to do makeup for Halloween Horror Nights. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. That's like my goal. I feel like they'd hire me. Yeah. I hope. And I think that like, that'd be, you could probably do that now if you wanted to. Yeah. You got to plan for it though. The thing that sucks about stuff like that is that like you're there, which is like great for personal experience and it's great for a resume, but it's not going to be great for like any yeah. sort of a financial situation. It's more kind of like, it's just like, I want to do this type thing. Yeah. Which I could afford <laughs> to yeah. do now. So Fuck yeah. I have a lot of friends that, uh, a lot of friends from special effects school that they worked at um, the companies that actually build the stuff for like um, Universal and Disney. Um, I have friends that worked on stuff for Star Wars Land, um, the Harry Potter stuff. Yeah, they like built all like the facades and stuff for that. Nice. So you know, got them hookups. Love it. <laughs> Fucking love it. Um, okay, so um, as we are, this train is 
rounding the station here. <laughs> uh, I have a lot more that I want to discuss and speculate on regarding <laughs> Universal Studios and that could uh, be a whole another podcast. Halloween in general, <laughs> but you know, we could we could do that without the cameras rolling. <laughs> However, while I have you here mm-hmm. in a um a creative discussion, productive sort of a environment, I mm-hmm. uh, no, I gotta I gotta know one thing. This is gonna be my last question. All right. And it's gonna tie in to everything. Okay. That we were just talking about. If you could make a haunted house, you're going to design a haunted house, Mm -hmm. but it has to be a haunted house based off of a property that is not traditionally horror related. You get to take anything stranger thing and make it scary. (laughs) Oh man. Anything like there was a recently, like in the past few years, like somebody got the rights to the banana splits and did that like horror banana splits movie. What? Are you aware of that? No, yeah, there's a, <laughs> I, I need to see that. <laughs> what? Yeah. that so that, I mean, exi- I saw like the Winnie the Pooh one. That's like, Oh yeah, that's, that's out. happening. Yeah. No, there's a banana splits one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you could take any, any property, of anything. And I mean, it, it could be like, it could be adjacent, like maybe like, so my answer for this would be like Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo's horror. But like, like, like an actual, like horrifying. No, Scooby-Doo. no, no, no. That no? don't count. Scooby-Doo is already like horror adjacent. It's horror. Okay. Basically. I would, I would classify Scooby-Doo as like horror, not horror, horror, but like, it's got monsters and shit. No, sure, but no, the- you got to take something that's like okay. not. Okay. That All don't right. count. I love the pushback on that this. That don't count. Okay. Think of something else. Okay. Well, what are you thinking? What What's something I like that's not? Something that could be adjacent in like a Halloween Horror Nights universe with them you getting do, ready to do. You could do spooky Pokemon. You could do spooky Pokemon. All the ghost ones. Hunter um, just biting you. Or like... uh with them doing the super Nintendo land and the Epic universe stuff, it'd be fun to do like, like a Bowser's castle. Oh my God. Sort of a walkthrough mansion type thing. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Even though that is like, it's, that's horror. It's supposed to be horror, but seeing something like that, I I think would be fun. Spooky guy. Fieri. (laughs) (laughs) I want him like Bloody Mary where you're like <laughs> in your kitchen with a mirror and you're holding a, a hot wing and you say Guy Fieri in the mirror like three times and he takes you to Flavortown, but it's scary. So I'll tell you this. <laughs> when I was uh, a kid, my dad lived next. Well, there was like my dad lived in an apartment and there was a kid that lived above me and a girl that lived next door to me. And the scariest shit that I can remember from being a kid was the first time that one of them brought up Bloody Mary. Really? Yeah. That Bloody Mary never scared me. That it, it fucked with me a little bit. It really did. I don't know why I could. I mean, I could understand why it'd be scary, but no, if she was an alien, I'd be terrified, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's not too much that like scares me besides aliens and elevators and children. Okay, so we really just are <laughs> potentially opening a can of worms here. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen The Shaft? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No, is it a movie? Yeah. No. So there is a movie um, called The Shaft from the early That's 2000s. a terrible name. With uh, Naomi Watts from The oh, Ring. Oh, The Ring's my favorite. It's a good movie, yeah. right? Pretty fucking good. So the shaft is about a haunted elevator that's controlled by a dolphin brain that starts killing people. A dolphin? Yeah, they like have like a dolphin brain that's controlling See, the robotics of this. El- it, I, I don't, don't like dolphins because there was that whole theory that dolphins are the gray aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm scared now. <laughs> if we want to get into uh, conspiracies. So the shaft might be the most frightening movie ever. Yeah, I don't like it. I just like Naomi Watts. She's pretty. She's cool. Oh yeah, Naomi Watts in the ring, oh. top tier. Chef's kiss. Uh huh. Guy Fieri kiss. 
Love it. The Shaft. That's, that is a bad name. I do not like that name. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the name. I'll <laughs> I don't look. like it's like a legit dolphin brain. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> Are we Googling this? I'm pulling this up. I have this set up to do this, so I'm going to do it. The Shaft. Oh, I'm scared what's going to come up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go Naomi. I okay. think that's how you spell it, right? Watts. I don't, I don't know how to spell. No, it's uh, called Down. No. The Shaft from 2001. I think that maybe. Down. No. They were like, the Shaft is too raunchy. We yeah, cannot at some name point in time, they ended up probably changing the name to Down. But yeah, here's The Shaft <laughs> from 2001. <laughs> oh, it was directed by. Did it's you see the It's called Down. What? It, they must have changed it. You see the title that we're on because IMDb they knew right now. Too many people would like make fun of the name The Shaft. Oh, yeah, especially with the director being Dick, Dick Max. <laughs> How is that a real thing? No. How is this real? <laughs> no. This movie is a joke. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Dick Moss. laughs> what? Oh, my Lord. Anyways, uh, that's a real. Okay. That, that's a whole can of worms that we don't need to get into. We'll just. My life has been changed. Yes. Yeah, so there's a, a director by the name of <laughs> Dick Mass. <laughs> And uh, who directed a movie called The Shaft. He did that on purpose. Probably. <laughs> um, I don't think we need to uh, talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's on a... Uh, too much. This podcast can be dumb now. But uh, before we go, I do want to thank you, Aww. Dominique, for coming I, over. I try. This was a great conversation. <laughs> it was nice to chat with you. Yes. We've we've really gone all over the place. Yeah, from, uh, this this was not what I was expecting. Our our <laughs> most uh, you know, our the things that spark us creatively to the things that you know to dick mass that, to to dick mass <laughs> the circle of life. <laughs> yeah, Nasvenya. I was gonna do it, but I was gonna do it very loud. Oh, nah. <laughs> Savenya! No! <laughs> you know? Beat it, beat. I don't know how it goes. Savenya. Yeah, I don't even know if it's like culturally sensitive for us to even try to sing it. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I, I didn't mean anything by that. Yeah, no, no. It's, I mean, Disney's way worse I love than the Lion either King. of us are. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah, no. The Lion King is tight. But let's wrap this up. So um, if you're still listening to this and you are not familiar with Dominique and Dominique's work, you can go to DominiqueDarko.com. Yes. I it's very have, outdated, but I will have the link in the description. You have uh, probably two weeks until this comes out. So you can update that website for <laughs> anybody that might want to visit. I'm not doing that. Okay. Well, you could just, <laughs> Look at my find, Instagram. <laughs> just find Dominique Darko on Instagram. Forget I said anything yeah. about the website. No, you can check out the website. You just... can check out the website too. And from that website, you can find the Instagram <laughs> yes. link. I am sure. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, with all of that being said, thank you all for that's not, my camera used to be there, but I moved things around. So now it's we there. Know where to look. With all of that being said, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming by. You're welcome. Thank you. No, it was great. It was a pleasure. Nice. Can we talk about Halloween Horror Nights now? Yeah, I'm going to cut this off and we will, we were going to yes. do all of our talking about that. So listen, I'll be back when I'm back. I'm always fucking here. Totally unimportant. My name is Brian. This is the podcast that you're listening to. <laughs> The name of the show is not the Brian podcast, but that's just what I'm calling it. It now, should be. So. Yes. That's it. And, uh, bye. Good. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, thanks. Yes. Peace out. Bye. Girl Scout.